Have you ever wondered what it would be like to feel steady and confident in your parenting? Do you ever think about how to truly savor these precious years with your growing people? And perhaps most importantly, do you dream of creating connected relationships that endure beyond childhood? I'm Carrie Conti, and I've spent the last two decades guiding, supporting, and inspiring parents to know and trust themselves deeply. And as a result, there are thousands of parents all over the world who feel skillfully equipped, personally fulfilled, and authentically connected with their people in all phases of development. Join me, along with my friend and collaborator, Christian Manieri, as we explore what it means to not parent. Let's get untangling. So Carrie, we're here on your new podcast. We are doing this. And I think a really good place for us to start is to really unpack for people and explain like this title, Not Parenting, K-N-O-T Parenting, but also a little bit of N-O-T Parenting. It's a double entendre. What do you mean by this? What are we, what are we doing here? Yeah, this is so exciting to me. And really, you said it. It's two meanings. There's first... I've said for years through my work, through my unfolding into the professional work I do, that in some ways I wish we could get rid of the word parenting because what I believe is that it really trips people up and puts an undue pressure on adult people who are caring for growing people, as I call children, in the sense that, you know, there's this role and this weight that comes with it that is really, it engenders this idea that there's somehow a right way to do it. And that if you don't know that way, that you're messing it up. And I can see that people take that on early, early on often in their parenting. And in my opinion, and based on a lot of the work I've done in my PhD and professionally, it's about the relationship. And so if we can really take off the limitations of what parenting and child, like parenting a child means, the context of it, it changes things. It changes the way that you interact and you start to recognize that this is a human to human, a soul to soul, a heart to heart relationship that you're having with these people that, you know, they arrive And they're in these tiny little bodies and they're very immature, but the beingness, the essence, the isness of who that person is, is always there. And you, the adult person who has the honor and the privilege of caring for them and and shepherding them and guiding them, that's what parenting really is all about. It's about recognizing, okay, you're in a smaller body. You have to go through a lot of development, decades of development, your body, your brain, your nervous system. All of it is very immature when you arrive here out of the womb. But very quickly, relatively speaking, it gets sorted out. And yes, parents are influencing that, but they're not making that little person who they are. They're already there. And they're holding the space and creating the environment that's allowing for the expression of that human. And so to me, when you think of not parenting, you know, it's a sort of a a silly idea because of course you're parenting, but this idea of taking that role off and really considering, oh, I get the honor of walking with this human. And here's the second part of it. While I'm doing that, they're going to show me places in myself where I have the opportunity to grow and heal and expand. And I call those the knots, that way, the K-N-O-Ts, where we bump up against each other. So here's this tiny little person that arrives and they're amazing and wonderful and you love them more than you could ever imagine loving anything else, anyone else. It's so deep. It's so rich. And at times, because of their development, there's going to be things that push your buttons, that get you tangled up. And that's inevitable because you're living and loving with these humans who are going through incredible changes. And 
the way that you could operate around that is to be reactive, to not really pay attention to the fact that, yeah, they're having their own experience and you're there with them, but there's a lot going on as a result of the interactions that you're having. And not only is that going to be evocative in you, it's actually showing you places where there's opportunity for healing and growing and expanding who you are. So yes, you're helping them grow, but they're also helping you grow. And that's what I mean by untangling the knots that, you know, along the way, when you operate from a more conscious perspective, which we're going to talk a ton about through this podcast, you start to really recognize that, oh, I'm not just helping them grow, they're helping me grow. Mm. So what we're talking about here is is a real paradigm shift in how we approach parenting, how we think about parenting, how we resource ourselves as parents. Let's talk about that that paradigm shift. Yeah, so that takes us right into part of what I want to lay out today, which I call the four, maybe five, but we'll start with four Ps. And the first one is the paradigm shift. So that's where my work really really began was I was in graduate school. I was studying a field called prenatal and perinatal psychology. And in the midst of my education and and really diving deep into that field, what emerged was a very new understanding. So I'm going to lay out the old paradigm, which was that, you know, the idea that a child, a baby arrives out of the womb as a blank slate, that there wasn't really anybody home. And from that perspective, it put a lot of pressure on parents that you are making them who they are, that the way that your parenting is going to determine the outcome of that person when they get to become a person as an adult. So they're not really there. They're not remembering anything. They're not really, there's nobody really home. They're a kind of a little blob and it's a lot of pressure on the parent to, you know, fill them up and make them good and teach them all these things about being a human. But what this field of study really illuminated for me and now for many, many people is that that's not actually how it how it is. That, you know, that old paradigm is sort of world is flat, new paradigm is world is round. And the new paradigm begins with this idea that there's consciousness there always that we don't become who we are. We are who we are. We just arrive in a very primitive and very immature and very vulnerable body that we can't, you know, we don't come out like other mammals where in a matter of minutes or hours, we're moving about on our own and we're communicating in clear ways. You know, the the little being doesn't speak our language right away. They have to learn it. They come out not walking and moving on their own. They have to be cared for. But the being, the isness, the essence, the energetic signature, the aliveness of that person is always there. It's never not there. You know, it's what allows for them to grow in the womb without you having to do a whole lot. You know, we're not just mechanical creatures. We're more than that, as we know. So, this new perspective is that, you know, we arrive conscious and that it's a multi-decade process of unfolding and becoming who we are already. And that requires our bodies to grow and that requires our nervous systems to learn how to manage our emotions. And it requires verbal languages and artistic languages and creative languages. And the parent person is not making that person who they are. They're already there. They're creating the environment and they're caring for and they're loving that person in a way that is allowing them to unfold and know themselves and and allow themselves to be known. And they're helping them understand what this is all about out here. And so, of course, there's a big responsibility to parenting, but it's different than maybe a lot of people might have been led to believe based on how they were parented, which was, I've got to work really hard to make this person okay, versus, oh, this person is not even just okay, but they're really 
extraordinarily uniquely who they are. And my work is to really be present and to meet them and in many ways model healthy humanhood for them along the way and be very aware of what languages, again, not just verbal languages, but emotional languages and social languages and, you know, societal languages you're speaking because that's what's getting wired into their brains and their bodies and their nervous systems. Well, I know that in the episodes to come, we're going to be talking about things like fear and, you know, some of the things in our our culture or in the ways that we quote unquote should be parenting can really trip us up. And for today, though, I, I really want to continue to lay that groundwork of like, so what's that next P? Yeah, the next P is paradox. So, you know, the thing that I think about a lot that really inspired the title of this, Not Parenting, is that it's both and that yes, parenting matters and it doesn't matter. You know, and I know people could push back on that. But what I mean by that is yes, you're influencing their unfolding. Yes, you're a part of their experience. And yes, They need you, especially in the beginning, because they can't even get food on their own. You know, we we arrive very primitive. We don't have a lot of ability, physical and, you know, social ability. But the essence of who they are and the journey that they're going to go on, you really can't mess up because how it unfolds is how it unfolds. Mm. And being able to hold both, and that's what, you know, I had a teacher in grad school that would say, The sign of spiritual maturity is you can hold paradox and being able to hold that how you do this matters and how you do this doesn't matter. That's a big thing to hold. But imagine really stepping back and recognizing that, you know, you're not making them who they are. You're giving them an experience. You're creating an environment for them and you're offering them opportunities for learning and getting educated and understanding the world that they're living in. But the path they're going to walk is theirs. And you are exactly where you need to be. And they are exactly where they need to be. And it doesn't always feel like that. But what if you could imagine it did? Like, what if we operated from the perspective of like, I'm going to show up and be in relationship with this person and influence them to the, the best I can with who I am and I'm going to work on myself so that the beingness of me shines through and they can trust that in themselves. But I'm also going to realize that there's going to be a lot that unfolds that is not a part of this relationship. And I have to be, you know, hold another paradox, holding on tightly and letting go all at the same time. Like, wow, what a wild thing to be a part of, right? Yeah, I think the other paradox that really is kind of popping up for me is this paradox of this is the greatest thing I'll ever do. Like, I wanted this. I love it. Like, as you said earlier, I've never known love like this. This is so profound. And like, there's just some days that just totally suck. (laughs) Exactly. And being able to hold those two at the same time is like, this is the experience that I'm having and being able to maybe not like it all or not maybe not love it all, but be able right. to lean into it all. Exactly. And this is what it is. Mm. Here we are. I'm doing it. And so, yeah, so paradigm, the paradigm shift, they're not, you're not making them who they are. They are who they are. You're helping them unfold and grow and develop. And they have to go through a very long process of human development to get to adult development. And it's never ending and it's messy at times. And that there are these paradox And then the third one is perspective, like the idea that, you know, I maybe what I just said, this idea that you are helping a human go through, you know, prenatalhood, babyhood, toddlerhood, childhood, tweenhood, teenhood, baby adulthood, young adulthood, adulthood, like it's a process and the amount of energy that it takes for a human to go from those two cells that originally came together to make one cell that made the whole human that came out of somebody's body as a five, six, seven pound person, baby person. And then from that point to one year, they're going from a 
person that can basically do nothing on their own to somebody who's starting to get up and walk and talk, whether it's sign language or making sounds and saying mama and dada. And then another year from that, when they're two, they're stringing a few words together and they're pushing toys around and they're making music and they're starting to do art. And then another year from that, and then another and another and another. And, you know, we think, oh, of course, that's just what it is. But we don't always take into account the amount of energy and life force and emotional juice that all of that takes to transform somebody that quickly. We're not changing that much anymore as the adult bodies that we're in. We're not growing that way anymore. We're not learning the same way. We're not trying to learn a verbal language and a creative language. You know, most of us aren't building systems the way that you are during those phases of development. And so from the old paradigm, we used to see a lot of the cranky, crispy, whiny behavior as misbehavior that needed to be disciplined and parented. But when you recognize, when you understand this new perspective, and you really step back and recognize that when somebody's getting home from school after being gone all day and using all of their creative and emotional and social juice out there, they're going to be very emotionally messy and maybe not operating from the highest level of their articulation and manners and it's really easy to get triggered by that and to notice your knots because a lot of times we weren't there was this this perspective didn't exist when we were growing up so it was seen as misbehavior and it was disciplined and so to hold a perspective of okay you're growing you're only 4 or 10 or 15 or even 25 of 100 possible years I, the adult person, 40, 50, whatever you are, I'm not always holding it together. Why would I think that somebody who's only been here a handful of years and is doing all of this growing should be able to hold it together and operate with capacity that we don't even do always? And so the perspective and the recognition of what is really going on beyond the behavior and even beyond the emotional discharge that can be so evocative and triggering to us is a real big piece of this way of thinking about young people and, and their growth. And so that idea of like pulling back the scope and really taking stock in like, okay, where are we and what are they actually going through because it might look on the surface like they're whining about the toy, but it has nothing to do with that because there's bones shooting through their mouth and they're growing teeth or they've got social situations going on at school that you have no idea about that are are really real to these people in the stages of development that they're in. And so I'm very aware, you know, that's one of my roles is helping to remind the big people of what it's like to go through the phases of development that they're in, that we don't have a lot of, mem we have memory of it, but we don't consciously put ourselves in their shoes as often as maybe we might want to. I think that the genius of this is that not only does the paradigm shift start to I don't want to say lower the stakes, but like it's, there's less pressure. Like, oh, wait, this isn't all me. This is, we're going to be doing this in partnership. But the perspective to that element really helps us to see that we're going through seasons. It, it might feel like an 18 year long sprint or a 24 year long sprint, but really we're going through this season by season, right? Like babies, toddlers, school age, on and on. And that seeing that as, and I know you're going to talk about this as well as a process, to me, it, it makes, it gives me sort of an overall perspective of like, ah, I can have a bad day. I can even have a bad month. I can even have a bad season. And it's, it's not all for naught. I haven't just completely ruined my kids that we're also in process as parents. I'm untangling myself right along the side that my kids. So 
to me, it, it gives me room to breathe. Yeah. And that's the next word, process, truly. And it's really both the process of development, both theirs and yours. And not we're not done. And the minute you become a parent, you're on a whole new trip. Like you're on another level of development. And even if you're a parent to six kids, the next one that comes along, you're in a new game because mm -hmm. they're a different human. So you're never ahead of it. You're never not in the process. So there's that process, but there's also what I'm sort of teasing out around this concept of not parenting, which is, you know, because it's like, it's all nice to hear the paradigm and the ideas and the, and the philosophy, but it's like, well, what is the real, how do you put it into practice? Like, how do you do this? And the way I've been thinking about it lately is, you know, when you get in those sticky situations, when your child is having a meltdown in the grocery store or your teen is starting to do things that you're edgy about because it's new and it might be a little scary or, you know, there's a thousand things that get you. And so, you know, of course, if it's a life and death thing, call 911. I would never say don't do that. But in most situations, if you're aware that everybody is actually safe, it's easy. The old way would be thing is how the thing is happening with the kid. You react. You know that's kind of how most people operate. And you either scream or you freak out, and then maybe you feel bad. And you know, it's not always as pretty as you'd like it to be. And what I've kind of clarified through my own work is, it's not just thing happening out there, you reacting, and that's what goes down. It's different. It's it's really thing happens out there. You are having a physiological experience. Your nervous system goes into a fight or flight. You get triggered. You have a knot that tugs and you feel something. And so handling that, pausing and noticing, oh, I'm out of sorts. Like, oh, this one got me. Like, ooh, when she said, I don't love you or you're mean or whatever it was, ooh, that really hit something. Okay, so there's the thing that happened, but then there's the actual physiological reaction in your body that needs to be handled. Like, yes, you can operate from there, but it's not your clearest ways of being. It's a very uh, primitive part of you that's going to pop out and it will. But when you can, cultivate the ability to notice it, there's a lot of information in there. And then that's, so that's one thread. Then another thread is, all right, what's really going on here? You know, the, have that perspective and pull back the scope and really not jump in and try to do anything, but just be able to, oh, right, they're three or, oh, right, they're seven and look what's happening and I can pull back. I don't have to be fixing this or changing it or trying to stop it. Let me really consider what's needed. And then there's the actual interaction with that person because ultimately your desire ultimately is to help them. And it takes sometimes just a millisecond just to catch what's going down and the reactivity. And it gives you just that micro pause that allows for a little something different to happen. And by doing that, you're going to model, you're not only going to help them in the moment have a different experience, but you're going to be modeling something that's really essential for being a healthy person in this world, which is how do I handle when hard stuff happens? How do I handle when I get dysregulated and I'm not operating from my clearest perspective, like what's my my emergency plan for when human life really shakes me? Mm -hmm. And so you're not going to do it all the time, but there are tools. Like that's what I'm really most excited about with this whole concept is that, you know, it's not how to parent, it's how to be in really healthy relationships with people who are in different developmental phases so that you're, like you said, partnered with them. You're helping them in their growing while you're being more aware and modeling self-awareness and clarity for them. Because here's the thing, 
we live in a world, as we know, that we can't possibly prepare them for technology and what this physical world is going to be like. We we can't even conceive of it. If our parents in the back in the 70s had been asked, you know, what do you think the world is going to be like in 2023? It's very likely they would not have said a fraction of the things that we're doing right now. And on that note, same thing goes for continuing forward in the next 50 years. And I don't even think we can even conceive of it because it's so far beyond what we could even imagine. So that's not your job to prepare them for that. But the humanity, the understanding of how their brain and body works, the knowing of that part of them that's been there from the moment of, you know, the moment they arrived, their isness to be connected to something beyond this physical environment that that spiritual self, that deeper knowing, that part that has a sense of their path. And you can't teach that, but you can model that. So you being able to be a partner in that with them so that they start to hear themselves and you pointing them back to their own knowing and you you trusting them and you trusting yourself and you giving them opportunities to develop trust with you, that's where it's at because that is how you're going to be able to say, well, I have no idea what you're walking out into because you're living your life, but I do know that you know how to hear yourself and you, I've at least given you some skill around or at least modeling, if nothing else, of somebody who's aware and clear and, you know, can really stand on what they value because they're living it. I love this, this metaphor that we're using of, of there being a knot and us untangling, because I think we can all see that in some of those examples that you had mentioned, like our daughter or child or says something kind of, you know, really prickly to, to us, or there's a meltdown in a grocery store. And there's the thing that happens, and then there's our response to it. And honestly, I can look back in my own 14 years of parenting and see that I often made the tangle worse. <laughs> you know, And there were many moments that, that my response, or let's be honest, my reaction to what was going on, it pulled the big ball of yarn much, much tighter. And so the thing that I find is just filled with so much compassion and really pragmatism is this idea of like, yeah, there's just going to be a lot of these little tangles, like these little yeah. messes. And, and there's a way to just kind of lean into them and kind of pick at them and, and pull them apart a little bit. And, and that's what we're going to be doing in this mini series. Yeah, that's totally what we're going to be doing. And I want to just add one more piece because it really, no pun intended, ties the whole thing together. <laughs> it's really about practices like that as much as this philosophy this ideology whatever you want to call it is important and meaningful it doesn't do anything unless you're really practicing and that's all we're ever doing we're experimenting and we're practicing but what i mean is even more fundamental which is how are you as the adult person in this relationship who is modeling and guiding how are you resourcing yourself how are you gathering energy how are you feeling fully fueled? How are you fulfilling you so that you have it in you to be present for this adventure? And when you do, when things do go south or you do get tangled, you know, the littlest one can't be the untangler. They're not equipped. And so it does fall on the parent person. And that's not always fun to hear, But what a golden opportunity to become someone who can really understand how they work. You know, how does this operating system work? The the isness of you so that you've got enough in you for when those big moments happen, you know how to pause and steady yourself. And you're not so far gone and depleted that it just takes you down and then it's another tangle that wasn't even there. Because you're right, the tangles you know your people come along these these child people that you you know we the people you call your children they arrive and 
you don't even know some of the tangles that are in you until you are in those relationships. So you can't even possibly, nobody should ever even imagine that you could be tangle free before you get into parenting. The point of parenting might be on a spiritual level for these little tiny gurus to arrive to show you where are these knots? Where are these shadows? Where are these parts and places that are so vulnerable and do need our compassion and do, you know, do need a little more uh, permission to be heard and, you know, having some practices, some daily practices that I call, you know, your essentials, how you're fueling yourself. And this is something that you and I have talked about for years, but it's like, what are the ways that you're hearing yourself and that you're really aware? Because here's the thing, often those knots, those times when we do lose it, when we flip our lid and we're not present with the people around us and we're doing something reactively instead of responsibly or creatively, it's because we're under-resourced and the part of us that needs something that hasn't been heard is so vulnerable at that moment that it jumps out and, you know, kind of creates a little more chaos, creates more tangles. So like to me, what I'm excited about, about all of this is there's just so much potential. Like, you know, to me, there's this, there's this sort of like, evolutionary process that we're in and we're all in it. And when I think about, you know, the parenting people, there's so much potential for human expansion and wholeness and healing to be found through this experience of welcoming another human and walking with them through their development. Mm. Well, We've got eight episodes that we're going to be doing together. I am so thrilled. And I wanted to just give people a, a little bit of a glimpse of like how it is that you and I have come to be working together and and what it is that you do exactly. And then in the, in the next couple of episodes, we could talk about how, like how it is that you became someone who's even interested in parenting. And then we're going to be untangling all these knots. But I wanted to share that, so you and I met almost 14 years ago now, so I, I remember very distinctly having a very small, under two-year-old and a newborn baby in my arms and feeling like at the bottom of Everest, how the heck am I going to do this? I was depleted, I was tired, I was just completely overwhelmed as a parent. And that was the genesis of our work together. And you have been my coach and my friend ever since. But this idea of a parenting coach is, I think it's becoming a little more normalized. But for the most part, I don't think people even know that that there's such a thing as a parenting coach. First, I want to know, is that actually how you define yourself? And then secondary to that is, what do you tell people when they say, what is it that you do exactly? Mm, that's such a great question. I've kind of played with all different ideas and none of them totally fit. You know, I like the word guide. I like the word mentor. I think coach probably says it, even though that word doesn't really resonate as much as I would like to. You know, I'll share a little bit about my story because I think it's it's relevant to that question. So I didn't get into this because I had a baby and I got so excited about, you know, I got to tell everybody about parenting because it's so miraculous. Like, I don't have children. Like I'll just say that right up front. I I don't have children of my own. The way I got into this is when I was a little kid. Like I remember being 3 or 4 years old and I was so drawn to tiny babies. And people would give me dolls and I would be like, I don't want this. I wanted to be around baby people. I wanted to get access to babies. And my parents were done having kids. I was the third of three. And when I was seven, we moved to a new town. And right when we got there, this neighbor walked down the street and she had a three-year-old with her and she was pregnant with her second. And, you know, I saw her and my eyes just like lit up. I was like, oh gosh, who are these people? I got to know the, I got to know these people. And for whatever reason, you know, she said, you know, when our baby's born, I don't think she even knew at that point, you can come down and, and see us. And I was like, 
counting the days. I think we got there in June and he arrived in September. And I remember the moment, I will never forget it. My mom and I walked down the street and we had a present with us and we knocked on the door and she'd only been home maybe three or four days. And I think her mom was there and the grandma opened the door and invited us in. And I just remember this feeling like I just had this visceral, like, oh, like the smells of like a new person in the home and whatever fluid, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very human moment of like, people are in motion. And I was just, you know, she walked down the stairs and she was holding this tiny, tiny, tiny human. And my eyes lit up and I just couldn't believe my luck that I got to see him. But for whatever reason, I still don't understand it. And she and I are still in, you know, in contact and we talk about this. She said, do you want to hold him? I was seven years old. And if you know seven-year-olds, most people are not handing their newborn (laughs) baby to a seven-year-old. So they propped me on the couch and put pillows under my arms. And she put him in my arms and my whole being just lit up like it's like something got ignited. Like it was my isness going, this is your thing. Mm. And so for the rest of my childhood, I was the mother's helper for her. I was the mother's helper for most of the families in my neighborhood. So I would get home from school, I'd grab a snack, and then I would go to whoever would have me who had little people. And I would take them on walks and I would sit and chat with the mom and we would, you know, these were my friends. Like I wanted to be not just with the little ones, but I wanted to be with the moms too. And this continued and I got to grad school. I mean, I got to college and I thought, oh, I'll be a pediatrician. And 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 that wasn't my path. And then I thought I'd be a midwife and that wasn't my path. And then I started learning about holistic health and the lights went on again in that same sort of way. And there was this realization of like, why are we undoing so much in adulthood when we could be doing it differently when people are small? And that's the puzzle that started to, you know, the pieces got laid out. And for the last, you know, I mean, 20 years since graduate school, I've been playing with these ideas and I've been you know, working with families all over the world and I've created programs and I'm, I'm just, you know, passionate about trying to figure out how can people be in these relationships and feel fulfilled along the way, but also kind of be in service and of the least interference to these people in their unfolding. And part of why I'm so passionate about this one is because I knew I was in there. I never thought of me as not me. I was in a little body and then I was a teen body and then I was an adult body, but my isness and my passion hasn't wavered. That hasn't changed. It's only gotten deeper. And I believe that's everybody. And some people come, you know, some people are here to just dabble in things and try things on. And some people are here to drill deeply, but my sense of my beingness and my purpose that has led me to here has really never not been there. And so I wanted, you know, partly it's like a double, it folds on in on itself because the thing I'm passionate about is helping people know the things that they're here for and what their people are here for and how to live from that place of like, what do you love and what are you wanting your journey to be? And how do you want to express yourself in this unique way? And so that's wraps us back around to why I don't really know what to call myself because the little kid who wanted to go hang out with the moms and the babies is still what I love doing. I still love knowing about people's families and how are these people developing and I've been I've been paying very deep attention to human development since I was 7. I'm 51 years old. Like this is a life law. Like I've put in my 10,000 hours multiple times. <laughs> And now I'm ready to like scream from the mountaintop, like, I've got ideas, please like consider this. And if it's helpful, great. And if it's not, let it go. But the, you know, maybe champion of of humans, I don't know what to call. Like, I just <laughs> I want people to have really rich, rewarding, fulfilling lives. And I see the possibility for evolution 
that comes with people parenting from a perspective that's more conscious and more intentional because they're more fulfilled and they're knowing themselves. And then they're walking alongside these people and they're really honoring and respecting that that's a person. And now I've been at it for so long, I see where that takes people. And like I say in the intro, people are living fulfilling personal lives and they're having these rich, authentic relationships with the people they call their children well into adulthood in ways that I don't see among my peers as much. So we're ripe for this. And I can't wait to see where it unfolds. And doing this with you is like, it's the best gift ever. So thank Mm. you. Well, it's such an interesting experience for us to be having together because you've been along the ride with us for such a long time. I mean, I've got a 12 and a 14 year old now, two girls and, and listening to you speak I can see that this perspective, this paradigm shift, these practices, this process all have woven their way through our parenting and have really formed the foundational scaffolding of the life that I now experience with my kids, the life that Mark and I now experience with our kids. And so I love that we're doing this right now in this moment because like, I am not even close to done this journey and I've come pretty far along here with you. And so I guess it's it's my way of saying is for anybody listening who's like, well, that sounds good on paper, but what happens when the rubber hits the road is the rubber has been hitting the road in my household for for over a decade now. And I still say that listening to you talk about this way of thinking about parenting and partnering is what has created, it, it is the number one thing that has created the joyful, connective, steady life that I now experience in my partner, in my family, with my kids. And so this is just a taste of so much more to come. And I'm just so excited that we're going to be doing this. I can't wait for everyone who already knows you to hear that you've got a podcast. And for anybody who's just meeting you for the first time, really getting access to your amazing brain. So um, I'm excited. So I want to make sure, because we're going to be pointing people to your website a lot Mm -hmm. throughout our time together with free resources, with upcoming offerings. Where do you want people to head to when we start talking about some of these things that you'll be offering? Yeah, I think my website, it's carryconti.com. And that's, yeah, go there. I've got more blog posts coming and we're just trying to get all the goodies on there so that you feel like when you get there, you're like, oh, this is, there's lots of food and then there's more things to try and there's ways to learn and get support. You know, I am, I've been passionate about this and I'm like reignited in a way that I haven't been in a really long time. And it's like, it feels like the moment and I'm like ready to roll. And I, you know, to me, it feels a little bit like a movement. Like what if We all, you know, what if there's a group of people that are like, we're not parenting and it's, you know, sort of silly, but it's also really, really powerful and it's making a statement and it's taking a new path and, you know, we'll get to this, but I do want to end today at least by saying, and I think you can, you can speak to this personally, this isn't a method. This isn't a way. This is a perspective. It's a way of thinking. There's lots of tools. But you have to use this to find what's right for you. And for me, that's what's so exciting is Mm -hmm. that you're not doing a Kerry Conti method. You're really finding your way through this adventure and this journey and this life. And I am there to support and cheer and celebrate along the way because it's intense and it's big, but it deserves like serious appreciation. And I'm all in for that. Me too. Me too. All right. More to come. Can't wait. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Not Parenting. For any resources or offerings we spoke about in the episode, remember you can head to carryconti.com or you can click on the links in the episode show notes. Thanks for being here.